what, what's called an air track. This is a hollow aluminum rail here. And air is pumped in here. There's an air pump. Okay? Pumps air. And you see these small holes? So it pumps the air and the air escapes through these holes. And this is a glider. When you put the glider on there, here there's a huge amount of friction, right? But when you it's already moving. There's no static. How do you make sure the air track's level? Do you get out a bubble level and put it on here? Anyone? Say, don't look at me, look at this. How do I level this? You just watch the direction. Yeah, it's wire. built in, right? It's going to be more accurate probably than the bubble level. So you put it on here. Now these things, these air tracks sometimes have a slight curvature so that if you want to do a collision experiment, the mass will, will not move around a little bit. But, so they're not perfectly straight. But the best way to level it, because there's no static friction, put it here, release it from rest, see if it stays there. It's pretty level. Let's check it over here. Yeah. Okay. Not quite level, that's good enough. So what if I give it some initial velocity? Describe the motion you just saw there. Pretty, pretty constant velocity. I'm sorry? Constant velocity. Yes, it's, 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 it's con it looks constant. The rate of change of position with respect to time is a constant. So over, over any time interval, it always covers the same distance. That's constant velocity. Okay, to beat it to death, <laughs> here's another way. It's constant velocity. So when uh, it collides, it bounces yeah, and the, yeah. Now that's getting ahead of the uh, it's unavoidable here. <laughs> What's going to happen when it bounces back? It comes in with a certain <clears throat> speed. Remember, speed is the absolute value of velocity. It goes out with what? What's the speed? Do you think it's going to go out at? Almost the same. Yeah. Same this is a fairly pretty good elastic. This is nearly an elastic collision. We'll go for, through all this when we get. But you can kind of see that it, it, does, it does that. Now we can test, we can quantify how constant the velocity is with these photogates here. We'll be using a similar ap apparatus in the lab, okay? So one of these, I don't know which, is an infrared light source. It sends out a beam, let's say this one, sends out a beam to here, and here there's a photocell, okay, that picks up on the light. And what this box right here does, let me reset it, is when you interrupt the beam, it starts a timer. It should be going. Good, because we've had trouble. <laughs> and then when I stop the beam, when, when I restore the beam, it should stop. So we can utilize this. We can put this at some point here. Here's the glider. Now I'm going to have the glider, this looks kind of ugly. I'm going to have it interrupt this distance of the glider. When the glider moves by here, it's going to interrupt the beam. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing here. I need to, I'm adjusting the height right now. Okay, this, this shouldn't work. Okay, now I want to, is this working? Sometimes, okay, hopefully this one will work. So, if we know the time this is interrupted and we measure this distance, we can get the velocity, actually the average velocity. We will take this distance <coughs> divided by that time and that's going to tell us the velocity the average velocity. Now, these two times should be pretty near each other, are they? Yeah. Okay. This time should be, what should it be, a little bit bigger than this time or a little bit less? A little bit longer. It should be a little bit bigger because it's, it's probably, is it? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll believe you. I believe you. I tested this enough. I'm sick of this. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we'll be using this kind of uh, this is common in mechanics labs to use this. The next thing we're going to do, we get rid of these. I guess we can turn this, these off. The timer is off. Now, this is an, alum an anodized aluminum plate. Now we have what's called an inclined plane, okay? And this is one of the things that Galileo investigated. Now Galileo used rolling, we'll talk more about this when we get to dynamics. What he was doing was, he was really interested mainly in free fall, but it just happened too fast. You know, when your timing device is, is, is like your heartbeat or an hourglass, that's, I'm not kidding, okay? <laughs> that you, free fall is just way too fast. So he, re he recognized that if he had an incline, if he had a, a, a plane that's inclined, that it should be essentially like gravity, but it'll just slow things down. That seems pretty obvious, but you know, nobody else was thinking anything like that at the time, right? So he had to use rolling objects, which greatly complicates things. We'll talk about that later in the course. Fortunately, we've got these, this air track. We don't have to worry about rolling, right? So when I put this on, and I turn on the air, and release this from rest somewhere. You can see that it's accelerating. You know that it's accelerating because I released it from rest. Initially it had zero velocity and sometime later it had velocity. And I think you should be able to see that it picked up velocity. got greater and greater velocity. It turns out the acceleration is constant here. But again, I'm sorry, we have to wait for dynamics before we can prove that. So just accept it. Well, at time t is equal to zero, I'm going to start this. We're going to call this zero. Can you see that piece of tape there? This edge? Yep. See like the black tape? We're going to call that x equals zero, and at time, and that's going to be released from rest. So we end up with this very simple relationship that Galileo actually derived, or somehow understood. Okay, for constant acceleration, this tells you what the position is as a function of time. I'm going to click off here. Remember this? This is an old metronome. So I hope you can hear this while the pump's on. This is now clicking off seconds, sounding seconds. OK? I've calculated from that formula where it should be at the end of each second. After the first second, it should be here, second, third, fourth. So let's see if it works, okay? I'll release it right on a beat. Can you guys hear this? Not bad. So from an experimentalist point of view, Fairmouse usually think a little bit differently than theorists in physics. This is sort of a, this is a pro, an indication of the acceleration, a strong indication that the acceleration is indeed constant here. But we'll be able to prove it without any doubt. But we need to go to, we need to dynamics first. We need to do with forces. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, so you said is x equal one half at squared is in relation to what now? x is the distance of the glider, starting from here, this is right. x equals zero. Right. x is this distance, t is the time, a is the acceleration. Right. So why do we take it out of that parabola formula? Oh, I didn't even, I should, thank you. I should, I should talk about this. <laughs> so, if we plot that, that's an upright parabola going through the origin with its vertex or whatever they call it at the bottom of the parabola right there. So this is a sketch of, of what that looks like. And if we sample it at equal time intervals, which is what the metronome's doing, right, you can see that it's the displacement, it'll be some value here. Here, because of the square, it's going to be four times. Here it'll be, you know, two squared. Here it'll be three squared and four squared. So what you just saw there in the demonstration was, if you observed where the glider is, when you hear the metronome, it's, it's at these points, right? I started here, tick, 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 tick. And it was right where the, I placed the tape according to that.
Now, you know, for me to do this, I needed to know the acceleration. And we're going to develop a form. It's simple with the acceleration here. We're, we're going to, in dynamics, we will, it's one of the first systems we're going to look at. We will show that the acceleration is constant, and we'll come up with a formula for what the acceleration is. I had to do that to do this. Instantly, you see this thing? This is slope, right? It's an inclined <coughs> plane. Anyone want to guess what the slope is? It turns out to be a nice simple number. It's yes, the distance, it's the, the rise here, which is the height of the, the thickness of the block, divided by the distance between the supports. It turns out this is 50 inches and this is a half an inch. So the slope is what? It's one over one, it's one one hundredth, yeah. Which is some, something in degrees, I don't know what, I didn't. <laughs> but it happens to be a slope of one over one hundred. You know, a slope of one is what? 45 degrees, serious slope. Okay, any other questions or comments?